So you're thinking, hey, it's the same tile as before, but no, actually, see, I just take this piece and I move it and I change it. So we're chapter three, just enough physics, chapter three, 2D and 3D stuff. That means we have to use vectors. Okay, so in the last episode, uh, in case you missed it, I went over some very basic uh, vector stuff. There's so much more with vectors. And I think really, you're just not gonna get it until you do it. So I think I'm just gonna go into vectors. That's what I'm gonna do. Vectors, okay. Let's imagine we have the following. So here's my coordinate system. Uh, I, I, let me point out that uh, this is not real. Uh, there is no origin. You can actually put the coordinate system wherever you want. Uh, it's, it's your coordinate system. You do what's convenient for you, okay, in general. Okay, normally we put Y and the positive and away from the surface of the Earth, but that doesn't have to be the case. Okay, so I have a fly here, right there. And then this fly goes like this. So this is at T1, and this is at T2. So it moved. And I'm, I'm restricting this to 2D, but it could easily be in 3D. It doesn't really matter. So the, the question is, what can we say about the motion of this, this fly? Because before we were doing this, right? I had something moving in the positive or negative X direction. One-dimensional motion. Now this is two- or three-dimensional motion. So... Again, we have to deal with this definition of position and average velocity and acceleration. So the first thing we're going to do is use the position vector. So R1 is a vector from the origin to the location of the object. We use R because it's, it relates. I think it relates to spherical coordinates. I think that's why, but I'm actually not even sure. Okay, we just use R a lot. So if I draw that down, I actually could write this as R1 equals, we could call it X1, Y1, Z1, comma. So this says it has uh, an X and a Y and a Z component to that vector. And really, it's just the coordinates of that since we're starting from the origin. And this is how we describe the position vector. It's not real because it depends on the location of the origin, but it is very useful. Okay, so then this thing moves along uh, this path, and then later it ends up over here at, yep, you guessed it, R2. I know you're, what you're thinking, this looks crazy hard. It's not, okay, so it's, it's okay. R2, X2, Y2, Z2. Okay, again, that doesn't really matter. But what does matter is the definition of average velocity. I'm going to go ahead and write it. So in one dimension up here, I had V average is delta X over delta T. And it was scalar, scalar, scalar. Here I have the average velocity as a vector. Delta R is a vector and delta T is a scalar. Okay, so you act, so the first thing we need to do is find this delta R. So this says the final position minus the initial position. So this is actually R2 minus R1 over delta T. It looks just like what we did before. We're just using vectors. That's the beauty of it. If I was going to draw this, it would look like this. Delta R. And I can calculate that. I already said that. Delta R is R2 vector minus R1 vector. So here I have R2 minus R1, and you remember we subtract the components. So this is just gonna be X2 minus X1, Y2 minus Y1, Z2 minus Z1. And these are all numbers and everything, that'd be fine. Okay, but now how do I deal with this divide by time? You, we can divide or multiply a vector by a scalar. So if I have the vector a is AX, AY, AZ. Then if I multiply it by some constant C times A, the vector A, I just multiply each component by that same thing. So it's going to be C, AX, C, AY, C, AZ. 
And you know, division and multiplication are really the same thing. So the same thing would be true. Each of these is going to be divided by the time. So I can write this as V average as the vector delta R over delta T. So it's going to be x2 minus x1 over delta T, y2 minus y1 over delta T, z2 minus z1 over delta T. And look at this. Does this look familiar? The same thing. This is the velocity in the x direction. This is the velocity in the y direction. This is the velocity in the z direction. So v average, as we would expect, would be equal to the vector v average x, v average y, v average z. Check that out. And I know what you're thinking, it's all symbols, there's no numbers, I can't handle it. Give me some numbers. Well, we're going to do some numbers at some point, but I think it's important to realize that we can do the same thing we're doing up here, but in vector form. That's the goal, okay? So I could, if I know the initial and the final position of this uh, and the, the time t1 and t2, I can calculate the average velocity as a vector. Um, notice that if I put my origin up here, there's my origin. Then here would be R1, here would be R2, but delta R is the same. Delta R does not depend on where I put my origin. Okay, so that, that's a good thing. Okay, um, let's do one more thing with this average velocity and then we'll look at uh, acceleration. So here is my definition of average velocity. I can do the same thing. I can multiply both sides by delta T and add R, add R1 and I get R2 equals R1 plus V average vector delta T. This is my three, technically three, it's three, three-dimensional position update formula. Okay, it doesn't matter that I have two or three dimensions. These are vectors. It's done. Done deal. This actually works in one dimension too. Okay, and so here I have Average velocity times a scalar delta t, you can do that. And so I can I can just find the position. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll do an example. Uh, I'm going to do an example in Python, just not, not right yet. Okay, so next we have the definition of acceleration. So well, in one dimension, let's see, wait. Move that down. Okay, in one dimension, I said A is delta V over delta T. Okay, so in, in 3D, we have A vector is delta V vector over delta T. I, I don't think that should be any surprise. Uh, so that's equal to V2 minus V1 over delta T. I can solve for V2 just like before, and I get V2 equals V1 plus A delta T. Velocity update formula in 3D. See? It's not so bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so I can also do uh, this definition. Over 2. The average velocity is just adding the velocity and dividing by 2 if the acceleration is constant. So if I use that along with the definition of the... Uh, let's just do it because I, I did it before. So then I'm going to say, I'm sorry, R2, R1, plus V average delta T. So if I substitute in this for V average, I get R1 plus V1 plus V2 over 2 delta T. Now if I substitute this in for V2, I get R2 equals R1 plus, um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out. Now let's not. So say V1 plus, now I'm going to add this up in here for V2, V1 plus A delta T, all that over 2 delta T. Now I have two V1s times delta t over 2, so it's just v1 over v1 times delta t. And then I have 1 half a delta t squared. So I get r2 
equals R1 plus V1 delta T plus one half A delta T squared. Check that out. That's the kinematic equation in 3D. Because here I have how to, I can treat all of these as vectors. Okay, And this really breaks into three equations. Uh, it'll be the x equation is x2 equals x1 plus v1x delta t plus one half ax delta t squared. Then I have the y1, y2 equals y1 plus v1y delta t plus one half ay delta t squared. And then z2 equals z1 plus v1z delta t plus one half az delta t squared. So the, oops, you can't even see that. Okay, so writing this vector equation is the same as writing these three equations. That's what makes it so powerful. Okay, because we can deal with all these equations at once by using this vector equation and that vector equation and the position update vector equation. Okay, so that's the kinematics in 3D. Um, I think what we're going to do next is a problem, and I'm going to use Python, and that's what we'll do next. So again, um, this is chapter three of the Just Enough Physics video series. Uh, if this is something that you think is good for you, kind of like taking physics, you know, you, you do the like thing, you do the, uh, you do the thumbs up. No, I don't know if they do that, right? They do this. They do this bell. Is that how they do it? That's how it looks? Bell. Click the bell. Uh, if you want to support this, watching this supports it. Uh, if you want to support it even more, I have a Patreon link down below. All support is appreciated, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.